Hi everybody, this is Ot Samurai and today I'm gonna be reacting to ReZero Season 3 Episode 2. Yes, I know I'm late with this one, but I was sick with a cold for like a week, so I'm here now and I decided to wait until Episode 3 came out, and it is, so I'm going to do both back to back. Uh, as for spoilers, no one commented anything, so I just decided that I'm going to tell you uh, about them when I see them, you know. So for episode one, it was that I knew Liliana's name and design, as well as Sirius' name and design. As for Heinkel though, I knew who he was uh, and who he was related to and why he's with Priscilla because I read a side story of Priscilla thinking that it was safe to read, but it wasn't. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't until he said his name that I was like, oh, oh, I'm not, okay, I'm not supposed to know this already. Uh, but yeah, I read that, I don't remember the name of it, but if you, if you read it, then you know which one it is. I just wanted to know more about Priscilla and her camp, and yeah. Uh, so that's it for what I knew about what happened in episode one. Now, this, uh, the talk before reacting to the episode this time is gonna be pretty long, and it's just a lot. There was a lot in episode one. So I'm gonna be reading from notes, and I don't. This is very rare for me to do this, but I just, I, I want to be through and I want to mention everything that I want to talk about. So yeah, so let's start. It's not really like in order of like things that happen, but just so like characters have their own paragraphs and then things related to each other are as well. So. Okay, let's start for, uh, or rather with, uh, Subaru and Julius's relationship. Because even though I found that funny, I was like, huh, I would have thought that Subaru would have already, um, accepted that, uh, Julius is his friend, but he's not there yet. So he has trouble being comfortable around Julius and just talking about him like when he first uh saw that joshua was related to him and he tried to compliment him but he couldn't really uh as well as he can't really show or receive gratitude from him like we saw uh julius thanking him for having an emotional outburst because he himself felt like he couldn't. And Subaru's like, uh, I don't, I don't want it, you know, like, I, I, I didn't get angry for you. And also when they first reunite, he's like, oh yeah, Julius is like, uh, basically sing, not singing his praises, but you know, calling him Subaru the no and everything because, you know, he wants to treat him as they're in equal standing now, but Subaru doesn't really, uh, believe anything he says basically and that's because his insecurities around him are still pretty strong and after all Julius is basically an amalgamation of all the things that he feels he comes up short w short with uh, so what I can't believe a compliment for him because he can't fathom the representation of all his inad inadequacies doing that genuinely. Uh, but as we see later on in their talk, we see that what Julius lacks is also what Subaru has. And maybe Julius will learn from him to bury, I mean, to not bury his feelings and eventually act fully on his emotions for once. Let's hope. As his nightly ways are preventing him from acting as freely as he'd like, so they're acting as shackles for him. So yeah, the, those are 
<clears throat> my overall thoughts on what we saw from Julius and Subaru. Also, uh, Subaru mentioned Julie, so, and the way that uh, Julius talks about it makes me think that maybe he's used that persona, that uh, nickname before he even met Subaru. And that's why he's, he says he it feels like it was a long time, even though it was a year ago. Oh, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, oh yeah, and then I did notice that the nature of Subaru and Amelia's re relationship is still the same. Uh, Timeskip did not change that, which is like, <laughs> I'm a little bit like, oh, Oh, that's a bit of a shame considering, you know, it felt like at the end of season two there was going to be a little bit more progress between them in regards to, like, maybe their relationship turning romantic. But at the same time, it's like, well, I didn't want to see it, see that happen off screen. So, <laughs> you know, pros and cons. But I guess uh, Subaru is just, you know, um, making it so that he can wait and Emily can just put all of her focus on uh, the race towards the throne. Uh, the next we have Garf and then the paragraph I have for him and Reinhardt, but especially for him, are pretty long for sure. Okay, so yeah, from the get-go we see that Garf is ready to throw down with Joshua which is, I feel like, the first hint at his insecurities in regards to his stre strength. Uh, then we also see that Mimi is shown to be a calming presence for him from the get-go. The moment we see her, he's like, oh, okay. Like, we see them together, Garth uh, just kind of, like, chills out. And then he's also, once they arrive at the inn, He's ready to take down Ratchins, but then he gets scared by Reinhardt's presence, then lashes out because he's angry at himself for it. So yeah, I was really confused at uh, Garfield the, for the way that he reacted towards Reinhardt, especially, you know, with how friendly he is, and because, you know, it's Reinhardt, you, no one would be able to beat him unless it's like Satala. Uh, in regards to just like, you know, pure raw strength. But it's like, like, <laughs> like, of course it's not rational. I can't really expe expect him to act like that, the way that I'm thinking, because Emotions are not really that logical. So, yeah. Uh, he felt frustrated and angry at himself, so he tried to take it out on Reinhardt. Who uh, is basically the embodiment of all that he feels he is not. Kind of, uh, maybe we're gonna see a bit of a parallel for this too. Like... Uh, they're going to be a parallel to Subaru and Julius. Uh, since, you know, he went from the, being the Sanctuary's biggest protector to Emilia's party biggest protector. So that part of his identity didn't change. Just the people he dedicates his strength to, which is very important to remember. Uh, then when Garfield tells Subaru that he's going to go out, so it kind of just, you know, underestimates how wor worried he is about this and basically says the wrong thing. Trying to assure him, don't worry, you're strong. Which is like, that's not really what I feel like is what he needed to hear. Since, you know, uh, Garfield... Uh, I don't, I guess something more helpful would have been like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're not the strongest, you know, that's not the reason, that's not the main reason I, I want you here with me. 
is because I, you know, because Subaru could tell that uh, Garfield was a softy deep down when he was still being antagonistic, antagonistic towards Subaru, that he wanted Garfield himself to realize that. So maybe he could have been like, you know, even if you're lacking something, they will make up for that, you know? What you can't do, I'll, I'll try to do it for you. Or Otto will, or Emilia will, you know? That's why we, we're a team. But we'll, we'll see. This might go and uh, bite Subaru's ass later. Um, then we see that the embodiment of his insecurities is Elsa. As she's the first real battle, she's the first uh, opponent in the real battle that he had. So he measures his strength based, based on that. He also probably feels some guilt over having murdered her while also seeing himself as weak, as it was her own mistake that led to her death, which was uh, her trying to protect Meili. And because of being distracted by that, uh, Garfield then was able to, uh, I think that was when he was able to bite her. And that was the bite that she couldn't regenerate for some reason. So he probably feels, you know, it wasn't due to his own prowess, but it was because uh, of Elsa uh, worrying about something other than beating him. So, yeah, if he can't see himself as the strongest, a lot of his core ident identity will crumble. Which, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how that plays out. But for the moment, Mimi's simplistic thinking is able to momentarily uh, make him think positively and not pressure himself too hard. As he is able to see, for the moment, that everyone's journey is different. And he doesn't have to rush into his ultimate goal or, you know, be so strict about the way to go about it. Ugh, that was a lot, but I think I, I said everything that I wanted to say about Garfield because he was a big focus of the episode. And then we see his mom? What's the deal with that? <laughs> Actually, never mind, I'm not fully done with him. Yeah, so she's not dead? Even though we saw in the trial, and like, I just assumed because literally everyone else in the story kept saying that she is dead. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess she is. But to be fair, we only ever saw, we didn't see a corpse. We just saw her carriage uh, in, well, you know, destroyed. So if this is her, which I'm thinking it is. Uh, it could be that she had her memories erased by either the whale or by lie. And this could also make it so that Garfield is personally, has much more personal stakes in this conflict. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, Garfield had already come to terms that she left because she loved him. And Freddy, so she's going to come back for with a parental figure for them. Uh, but this will definitely throw a big wrench into that. So we'll see. We haven't really seen him. He hasn't come back ever since then. So we'll see how that affected him. <clears throat> okay, now we're moving, moving away from Garth. Oh yeah. The way Subaru looks at Emilia when Joshua and Mimi leave from the mansion could be because he still feels like he'll never be as important to her as Buck. Which, you know, that could also lead into something in regards to uh, development for him. You know, like, doesn't matter how, how much reassuring things he can do, he'll never be able to feel. Uh, Puck's spot. He'll never be able to truly... Uh, well... 
just, you know, make her feel the exact same way that Puck did. But at the same time, it's like, well, he's not, I don't think he's trying to. But, you know, regardless of that, uh, he still, he must feel inadequate in some way that Amelia still feels sad. Even though he probably tries his best to make her, make it feel so that Puck's absence is not felt as much. Okay, so the world building in terms of Pristella, a lot of it went uh, over my head when first watching. But there are some very interesting things that I should uh, keep in mind. <clears throat> So there are several water gates that control the water level of Pristella. The control tower controls the flow of all water in the city. Samitia that uses water magic and stones to function. And Liliana's last song in the episode is broadcasted from here and it reaches the whole city. So that could be used for evil deeds later. Uh, evacuation routes in emergencies are limited. Th there's a lot of things here that the witch's cult could use uh, against or uh, against or uh, candidates. Uh, they're also very strict about letting people in or out. So, how did they get in? The city itself is supposed to be a trap, but we don't know for what. And it was built by Hoshin, who was funded Kanaragi. That also, I did not realize that. Potion was pretty influential. Uh, as for Liliana, she might have a divine blessing related to her songs. That's just, you know, speculation of uh, that, but um, we'll see, we'll see. As people seem to be unnaturally captivated by her, uh, the first song that we see her do seemed to be talking about Subaru when he first arrived to this world. And the way that Subaru joins in on the second song might be more than just comedic relief. As he even says that she creeps him out later and it compares her to Petal Goose. <clears throat> this could also be why Priscilla is so understanding and finds her music so captivating. Like I said, it could it could be that it's not, but the possibility is there. Also the Sword Demon Slope song. I still don't know the full lyrics in English, uh, but it's most likely about Wilhelm and Theresia, and it's what gives him the final push to start building the bridge between him and his grandson. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Amelia only saw Regulus when he arrived during the, her trial, uh, when Juice took the witch factor. <clears throat> From the moment he arrived to when Juice uh, start, starts using the uh, invisible hands. That's when she leaves, but we, the audience, get to see the rest. But she doesn't, so it's more understandable that she can't recognize him. So um, apologies to her. I was definitely being unfair. He also acted quite strange. He was very polite and forgiving, which is very different than what we've seen from Regulus before. Does he know who Emilia is? Like, does he know that she's the little girl that, um, uh, that Pandora terrorized once before? Also, Subaru acted very civil towards him, as if he knew how dangerous he is. So, gotta keep that in mind, too. Very odd, as well, that we didn't see Regulus's eyes. At all in that scene. <clears throat> okay, uh, Reinhardt. So, yeah, he seems genuinely hurt at Garfield reacting how he does in their first meeting. And I'm guessing that because of nightly ex expectations or simply because it's just Reinhardt, you know, that people always expect him to act perfect. So, yeah, he's the one to apologize even though he did nothing wrong. Uh, also, I did want an apology from Subaru to Reinhardt. It's not like a big deal, but it's like the last time they saw each other, I remember Reinhardt like basically 
like really imploring him to go and make up with Julius. And then he called their duel pointless. And that's when Subaru is like, yo, can, can you just leave? Like, that's not, I, I don't want to do that. Bye. But like he said it like so rude. And once uh, Reinhardt couldn't hear, he was like, mind your damn business. So I, I really wanted for, uh, you know, something that Sugaru did. Then he was uh, in his low streak of arc three to, for something like that to come back. Like I knew that Reinhardt wouldn't really hold it against him, but I wanted Subaru to basically show how he's grown since then to him. But it is what it is. Uh, oh yeah, he also refers to Wilhelm as Ojisama instead of Ojisan, which shows their distance because it gives like, uh, Sama is more like super respectful. Uh, also, Reinhardt showing concern over Felt's attire can be seen as him projecting his feelings of always having to appear in a prim and proper. Felt can tell he isn't very honest when trying to be humble and also recognizes he doesn't fully understand how others see him. The moment Heinkel addresses him, Reinhardt can't even bear to look at him and all the guilt he's made him feel, plus Wilhelm's unforgivable moment must come floating back. So much so he can't even say anything back and tries to make himself invisible. Yep, I'm guessing that's probably like a trauma response. As Heintel has probably treated him like shit ever since uh, Theresia died. Or like Wilhelm who's probably ignored him ever since then. But you know, they're both bad in different ways, but and, you know, Heinkel is definitely the one, in my opinion, who should be, who has the most responsibility to be decent towards him, and he isn't. <sighs> so, yeah. Uh, the cracks to his perfect persona are here. And the way he's been hurt by this has to be the biggest source of uh, insecurity for him. Which I love, like, obviously, something like not being strong enough, you can't apply that to Reinhardt. So we gotta go a different angle, and I love that they went for this. I, I just really, really wanted Reinhardt uh, for him to show us his flaws. Or, you know, just... The stuff that he feels that he's not good enough for. Uh, despite all her complaining, Phil cares for him and tries to reassure him that he doesn't need to worry about this and can stand proud by her side. She'll fight to take what Reinhardt is ought to have from Heinkel. So yeah, that was really nice. Uh, their dynamic is a little bit strange, but you can really tell that uh, felt has actually grown attached to him over this past year. Uh, then in the scene between Wilhelm and Subaru, he says, the heroes who leave their names upon in history are not heroes every single moment of their lives. Which I think this might also apply to Reinhardt, but right now, you know, he specifically says that to Subaru. So I think this is a lesson he'll have to learn eventually and mark in his heart as he still sees himself as having to do so much to make up for all the failures he sees within himself. Yep. He sees his, himself both as a loser and also as a hero who always has to be the one to prevent tragedy. But, you know, as Wilhelm says, you know, I like that you are the way you are because you reunite other people who are like you and you make them stronger. Which that's his special power. Uh, and then now we got to the last scene. So at first I thought that Sirius may be a sibling of Petalius, you know, like even though he's, he was a spirit, 
Uh, Betty and Puck are also spirits and they consider themselves siblings, so maybe and that's what I thought was going But on second thought and seeing other people's thoughts, I think she might have been his lover and looking at her appearance She looks very peculiar She has silver hair, purple, purple eye and pointy ears. It's hard not to think of Emilia and more so Fortuna <sighs> So we'll, we'll see what's up with that. Also in regards to her powers, everyone reacts normally to her introduction, then she claps and says it took 30 seconds for all of you to fall silent. So something there has to be the way she activates her witch factor conditions. Also somebody is the only one to ask a question, so it may be a sign of resistance. Like deep inside he's fighting all he can to ask her to let them go but it comes out quite mild because of her ability. Also, the boy in chains is linked to how everyone in the crowd dies. Probably due to how Sirius is obsessed with, like, a group loving as, as if they were one person. So they are all connected like that. Okay. Oh my goodness, that was a lot. But I said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, this is definitely gonna be a, a long one. So, yeah, let's start watching the episode, okay? In five, four, three, two, one, go. Yeah, what does he remember? about how things happened. Whoa. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so he's fully aware. How much time does he have left? Yeah, we need her. Come on. That's your spirit. Shouldn't you trust her the most? To help you? Oh, Emily can tell something is wrong. Mm. No. He's definitely making a mistake here. The fact that he's leaving Beatrice here. He's trying to do this by himself. This is crazy. Also opening? Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yo. Oh, this looks hype. Huh. Okay. Yo, what? Is that Amelia fighting Regulus? Yo. This could either be like fake or this is actually gonna happen. Also, 
Regal is holding an unconscious Amelia and that one I want to see. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Grab him and go! Oh, you say that, but that you're, you're not doing it. Shit. Mm. Shit. Jesus. God. Silver. I'm still trying to be the lone hero. So what a please seek seek people's help. God, that was hard to watch. Yeah, there's very little time to... Yeah. No oh, shit. I didn't think Ratchins was gonna be... So unreasonable. Ah. You should really believe in Subaru's words. Yeah. You should know who this is. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. He's calling for Reinhardt. Oh, was it not fast enough? Oh. Yeah, it's going quiet. It wasn't the clap. Yeah, so you gotta keep talking and not look at her. Uh. 
so, okay. But if Reinhardt was able to make it here and kill her before she kills anyone, they could have still be saved. Mm, okay. <gasps> yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, all oh, the relief I feel. Oh, yes, he's back to normal. Buddy, oh, yes, please. Okay, yeah. Surely, Reinhardt can take care of her easily. Just cut her head off. Unless he cannot use his word right now. That's why he's finding her better handed. Whoa. Oh, oh Reinhardt, you shouldn't have even given her the chance. <clears throat> yeah. Uh. Oh no, what is Subaru's bad feeling? <gasps> oh shit!
I can remember something like that influencing the fight against Elsa in Arc 1. Let's hope. I mean, that's the only magic he's been able to use before he contracted with Betty. Huh? Emilia? Ooh. Ooh, okay. Mm. You can't keep her away from fights all the time. I really like that Emilia is doing this. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. My girl. My girls. Oh. Okay. Damn, she didn't hesitate. No, 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 you were, you were good, you were good. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. No. Okay, well, at least we'll learn that. <clears throat> oh, Huma did nothing. What? Uh, she's talking about petal use. Well, she's not smiling anymore. So she... Oh, husband. Okay, yep. Right. Nice. Ooh, okay.
Yo, Emily is so cold right now. Yo, she's actually using ice as melee weapons? That's a first. Uh Oh She makes such cute sounds while fighting. Oh. Uh. No, oh. oh, I love this for her. Shit! Back? Ugh, gross. Seventy nine, huh? Uh, let me watch the ending. Hmm, is the water literally going to turn into blood? <laughs> Cute. <clears throat> Mmm, is it roid? Yo. I'm kind of liking the visuals for the ending a little more than the opening. Yo, my boy Reinhardt. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, heart and Betty. Oh, I'm all for getting my heart more screen time and character focus. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah, I don't know what the popular opinion is right now, but I like the ending more than the opening. Both visuals and the song voice. God, yo. 
the that part of the ending where Sugori is getting lifted by people's uh, by his friend's hands. Oh, so good. <clears throat> oh man, oh man. This video is already long enough. Um, but I guess, uh, let's see. I threw this episode. We really did see Subaru showcasing uh, <clears throat> how he still hasn't gotten over, uh, over some of his big flaws yet, of course. He's not gonna lose them all and just become the most reasonable person and have the best uh, decisions from the get-go, which I, I like, I, I like that. I still don't like, <laughs> you saw me like being a little disappointed in him that he had to, that he tried to do it all by himself the first time when season two was all about like, you gotta trust in your friends. Like, if you cannot do something by yourself, and you know you can't, then rely on others to give you more options to overcome this. <clears throat> like, I obviously, he's, uh, as always, worried about putting others in danger. <clears throat> because of, you know, uh, leading them to the tragedy that he's trying to avoid. But if he doesn't do it, then the tragedy will happen anyway. So yeah, obviously him going by himself ended the worst. Then going with Reinhardt, that was my first thought anyway. So yeah, I was like, if, if, the, if I was uh, you know, with Subaru, I would be like, let's go, let's go and get Reinhardt's help. Uh, which, to be fair, we didn't know that uh, Sirius has also the ability put in her about being connected to all the people she puts under that curse as well. So even though Subaru was trying to be like, yo, Rancor, something's wrong. Uh, I for sure did not see that coming, so. That said though, man. Oh man, oh god. I can't imagine how traumatic it must have been for Reinhardt. Even if that was not a keeping loop. Just, he killed all those people, plus Subaru and Ratchins trying to save them. Like, how messed up would that be? If that life just kept going. So then we get to now our fourth loop, which we haven't died yet. No one has that yet. But yeah, I just love Beatrice being like, I'm not even gonna ask you where you got this info. Just the fact that you're telling me, that's enough uh, to trust it. Like, just their bond between these two is amazing. And Subaru and Amelia, that whole thing was amazing as well. Subaru, sorry, of Amelia being like, I know you have good intentions, but I cannot let you just keep me out of danger and just, you know, uh, trying to hurt yourself in my behalf without me even knowing about it. That doesn't sit right way by me. So I really, really like that. Also just seeing uh, Amelia fighting against an archbishop 
it's just it's like yeah you, she's competent enough to be included in the fight <clears throat> so let her you know just as you want to protect her she wants to protect you unfortunately another arch archbishop showed up which i was wondering like is regulus and sidious uh working to together no i think he just showed up because he had an interest in amelia but we still don't know what sidious objective is here so that's a shame though that uh, uh, Amelia has been turned into a kidnapped girl who we now have to save. Hopefully that won't stay like that for long, as we do see her fighting Regulus in the opening. But for now, that's, um, uh, that's a frustrating sight. Anyway, I'm leaving this here. This video is long enough. So, we'll see you in the next episode. If you like this, please like and subscribe.